The Coast to Coast is the most popular long distance hike in Great Britain. It starts at St. Bees in Cumbria and it finishes at the other side of the country at Robin Hood's Bay in North Yorkshire. I hiked the Coast to Coast in May of 2023. On my own, I camped some nights and I stayed at B&Bs or hostels on other nights. Join me on this incredible journey as I navigate some of the toughest hiking that the UK has to offer with a 17 kilogram backpack, exploring some of the most beautiful places in the country. On this journey, I'm very open about the realities of solo hiking, such a monumental route and struggling with loneliness and fatigue as I push my mental and physical limits. With that said, please sit back, relax and enjoy watching. Okay, so let me catch you up on what's happened. So, I got to the Lion Inn yesterday at about 3.30 and sat down and I thought I had charge in my power bank or at least enough to charge my phone fully and it was completely flat and I had two power banks and they were both dead. My GoPro was like, I think 20% of my phone was on like 10. So I was just like, right, I need to think about this. So I spoke to the a uh, man behind the bar, a man called Callum. He was super helpful and he was really lovely. And uh, he said, it's about a four hour, give or take, walk to Glazedale. So, you know, I'll probably be getting there ar around sunset time. Um, if I'd waited for my uh, power bank to charge a little bit. So that's an hour's charge in my power bank. If that lasted me, into Glazedale, then it wouldn't last me overnight and I didn't know where I was staying in Glazedale and he went, well, we do camping here for three pounds, you're welcome to charge your things for as long as you need and I can sort you a lift into Glazedale for tomorrow and I was like, oh my god, are you kidding? I was just, I could not believe, I just honestly, just so helpful and kind. So I was like, that would be absolutely amazing. Uh, so I was charging my things and I told Cameron, I was texting him and um, I was like, I, I can get a lift into Glazedale, I think for like 20 quid or something. So he said, so Cameron was like, I'll pay for it. So he sent me the money. Oh God, honestly, just everything kind of worked out. Yeah, part of me is like, well, the walk from the line into Glazedale. But you know what? this is fine like I'm I'm really happy with the decision and how it worked out so now I'm in Glazedale just walking to Robin Hood's Bay <laughs> so we'll see what time we get there I think I said to myself that I'll predict between three and four so that should be the time that Cameron arrives so hopefully that'll work out um and yeah so it was a really lovely night, camped in my tent, there were loads of sheep around, there were uh, three of the campers, a guy in a bivvy, um, that uh, that girl I was on about the other day in the brown tent, he was at, uh, in Danby Whisk, I forgot to mention, she was at, um, Lord, she, she was at Lordstones as well, which was funny, because she said she was going to camp in the North York Moors as well, and ended up at Lordstones like me. Um, but I didn't see her until the morning. I could see her leaving it. I was like, hang on, she stay here. I still haven't spoken to her. She's quite antisocial, which is fair enough. Um, but yeah, she was there last night camping with, I think, her friend or boyfriend. And they had a little uh, Swiss flag. So I'm assuming they're from Switzerland. A bunch of us in the field just chilling and camping and uh, loads of sheep as well. And then at about five in the morning, myself and I'm assuming everyone else was woken up by the loudest sheep ever. It was just going like Bleh! for about at least an hour straight. You know, it's fine. Animals, it's not like people are doing it, are they? <laughs> so that was quite funny. 
yeah so the lift uh the lift that was arranged was a lovely couple i didn't get the names but they usually do like school runs in the area they have like taxi plates and license plates and everything and it's a lovely middle-aged couple and yeah just had a nice chat with them and drove me into Blaisdale picked me up from the line in at nine and yeah so here I am now that's the that's the capture up I had a little bit of food yesterday I had brie and cranberry which was amazing with some salad and chips and and I think I had, I had a couple of pints oh and that Callum also got me a pint which was so lovely so yeah just acts of you know kindness and generosity just it's just made my <laughs> my life this this journey so much better and easier like farm shop cafe for a wee and a coffee and like a cake or something. Look at these. Look at these toilets, man. <laughs> it's fine. I'm not, I'm not like particular or snobby about it. It's just like, God, that door's bloody loud. place though other than the toilet. I came across a little stop off at the side of the path, a horseshoe hotel farm shop. I sat down for about 20 minutes and had some coffee and pecan and maple pie, taking in the serene surroundings on my final leg of the journey. Lovely little place. Cute village. backtrack like a minute down that road because I missed the turn in. Very clear, coast to coast. Don't know how I walk past that. <laughs> this is very fancy. Box. That's so sweet. So if you've not got cash, you can transfer. Oh my god! Flapjack, cans of Tango, lemonade, Pringles, water, flapjack. Oh, that is so sweet. Very tempted to get a can, to be honest. You know what? I might. I think I will. I've only got a two pound coin, so I'm getting two because the cans and water one pound each. Put plenty of water. I'll get two of them. <laughs>
Rosemont. Really steep hill. Past a lovely couple hiking and uh, chat with them for a while and asked about the route. They said they've just come down from the bit that I'm going up and they said it's just up and up and up for a while until it flattens out. So that'll be exciting. Oh, colourful houses down there. It's like Balamore or something. That's cute. Oh my god, I've come so far in the last, like, what, however long it's been since I left Grosmont, like, 20 minutes, if that, to be honest, and I'm not bragging here, because you can hear how, you know, how out of breath I am, but, oh my god, I'm just, I paced up that hill, I was, like, on it, my calves right now are absolutely rock solid. <laughs> also, I've just seen there's a deer farm there. That couple that I spoke to before were saying I've passed a deer farm. Oh my god! I'll get a proper picture of them or video. That shows them a bit better. The first view of the sea, of the North Sea. Oh my god, I've literally just seen it and gone, oh my god! <laughs> okay, so over there I think is Whitby. I'm still heading in this direction, but oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, that is just... <laughs> oh my... <laughs> I don't even have the words, I'm actually gonna cry. <laughs> I didn't mean to start with. <laughs> oh, you guys are gorgeous. Hey, sorry. Oh my goodness. Oh, so tiny. I just want to pick you up and give you a hug. <laughs> okay, I think it's flat from now on until it goes down, but oh my god. What a trek, but I did it and I didn't even oh, complain, <laughs> kind of, I was just like, oh bloody hell. <laughs> oh wow, look at all this brown. <laughs> I'm so glad no one's around right now because I'm getting so excited to see, you know, my end destination, to get there, to see Cameron, I can't believe I'm seeing Cameron and Oh god, I don't know when well soon. I keep making like excited giddy noises. I keep going like <laughs> to myself and going like Wee! and I keep like flapping, you know, like when you're like when your arms just go like yeah! like that. I just keep I don't know. <laughs> oh I'm losing it. I'm so close. I'm I'm feeling I'm feeling like really awesome right now. Oh my god, I'm just, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm just like, oh, so excited. You haven't guessed yet. <laughs> also, I think just before we finish, I know I've still got a couple of miles to go, but um, just talk about the route a little bit. The ups and downs, you know, like the good and the bad. So the bad being anxiety, homesickness, a lot of physical strain. So. I think in regards to that, I think my worst, we'll start with my worst day and then we'll go to my best days. So my worst night was in Richmond in that hotel room because I was just inconsolable. I was, I honestly felt like I was at breaking point mentally, not physically, like physically I was fine, you know, I was feet were a bit sore, not blistered, just the muscles, you know, it's fine though. Um, but mentally I was just, I was not there the, the whole day prior, I just wasn't and, you know, the walk was lonely that, that day and 
I enjoyed my pizza and I enjoyed my wine. I didn't drink that whole bottle, by the way. I've got, I put it in an empty plastic bottle that's still in my bag that I've not drunk that I might have at the end. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed watching like, you know, TV, uh, Simpsons, Boggle Parks, Modern Family. You know, it wasn't like a bad night until, you know, later on when I was ready to go to bed and it was all just like, I was just, you know, when you can't, turn your brain off and it just won't be <sighs> basically it's never quiet up there for me it's never quiet and it's always about <sighs> multiple trains of thoughts and everything so a lot of them you know do go quite bad and uh while a lot of them are funny silly thoughts you know like funny and giddy and whatever i've also got a lot of like I've spoke about, I have spoke about this, so sorry if you're sick of hearing about it, but you know, the anxiety and everything and, and all that stuff. And there's a lot of that. So not right now, you know, just in the moments when I'm feeling down and it, and you just can't, it's, it's, it's hard to get yourself out of that, uh, out of that state of mind. I mean, I think the best thing for me is watching, watching something enjoyable, speaking to a loved one, or being with a loved one like perfect because then I'm not really I never really feel like that around people that I love it's just usually when usually when I'm on my own oh my god there's another, <laughs> more chicks look I don't know if you can see them because they're brown and camouflage well which is you know good for them so yeah just thinking about that night in Richmond and I was like I said inconsolable I haven't cried that hard I, don't remember the last time I cried that hard to be honest but I was you know when you just full on just sobbing and you just can't stop and then like I said uh, the day after when I was talking about it I went to the bathroom after you know after Cameron helped me feel better and I was feeling a little better still a bit down but you know went to the bathroom to brush my teeth before going to bed and looked in the mirror and my, and my eyes were bloodshot like I couldn't see any you know like the whites of your eyes couldn't see any white they were totally red and I've never seen my, my eyes so bloodshot after crying like so you know that's how hard I was crying and that's how much I was really struggling and there were other nights that I was feeling like that, but that was the worst of it. You know, there was a night in Patterdale when I... <laughs> Sorry, this is really sad. I'll get to the happy bits in a minute. So, it was a night in Patterdale, I cried myself. <laughs> I cried myself to sleep. <laughs> I know it sounds... Oh, God, I'm making myself s not, not sad, but... <laughs> I feel bad for myself. Is that is that normal? Um and I actually woke myself up crying from a dream uh, I woke myself up crying um, kind of crying like in my dream I was crying and I woke, my, and I woke myself up going <laughs> so I was just like oh I hope no one heard that that was weird and uh, that morning I had a bit of a cry too so I've just set off and it's a little late because I didn't set an alarm it's almost 11 and I set off like five ten minutes ago and um I didn't set an alarm because um my I had a bit of a bad night last night I was just upset and just really homesick I'll feel better throughout the day but I just I'm just really homesick I'm just really missing camera <laughs> I just feel so stupid for crying about it because it was such a beautiful place and last night was one of the most beautiful camps like places that I've ever been to so that was in Patterdale and I think I don't know if there was another from then in Richmond I think I did have a cry on another day but I don't remember which yeah, I don't remember which one, but I think it was just before Richmond. I think Richmond was the last night that I was like that bad. I think I just had to let it all out and I did. And uh, yeah, so um, 
yeah my least favorite part <laughs> of the trip was the day getting to richmond and the day leaving richmond until the evening because the day leaving richmond as i got into danby whisk was an awesome night where i met those people and uh we had like you know a meal together there were six of us there was me marie marie's another um solo female hiker doing the coast they were all doing the coast to coast and uh there was a dutch couple connie and oh i've forgotten his name oh bert bert connie and bert sorry <laughs> they were the dutch couple they were lovely too and um and uh two men doing the coast to coast who were cousins uh stephen and peter or Stephen peter i don't know I forgot which one he prefers so we were all just chatting chilling and that was an awesome night so that was exactly what i needed after richmond honestly so <laughs> the good like you know the ups we've done the downs we'll you know do the happy stuff now sorry so the happy stuff is all the rest of it to be honest um obviously that night i was just on about in uh danby whisk in the swan because another a lovely um australian woman i don't remember her name she bought me a whiskey as well and that was really sweet because i said i was camping and she was like oh well you'll need this to warm you up tonight <laughs> she was so sweet obviously when my mum came to see me oh my god that was so nice i so needed that she picked me up we went to ravenstone dale we stayed at this really gorgeous B&B um, kind of country house, I think it was, and had some amazing food. Hang on, let me just check where I'm going. Yeah, we had some amazing food. We went for a lovely walk. Oh my God, it was so nice. You know, the area, because it, it was on like a nature reserve. So we saw loads of wonderful things and she got this really funny video. <laughs> the chicken <laughs> running. I'll uh, put it on screen. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that that was that was really funny. And um, then <laughs> there was like loads of sheep in the road then. <laughs> it sounded like a sheep went thank you <laughs> what was that you guys are cute but kind of funny looking but still cute if they wanted oh god those horns man it's a good thing they're all like scared of you isn't it imagine if sheep were like really hostile they could absolutely bat you if they wanted to so yeah, that, that night that um, I saw my mum, that was a really awesome night, high point. Um, the first, oh my God, are you okay? <laughs> Did you hear what I just said? <laughs> if you really wanted to, you could, no, okay, good. <laughs> um, the first night was a really good one because I stayed in Cleetermore with uh, Tracy and David. Um, I found them on Airbnb, it was like 30 quid for the room, made me tea and got me some wine and then made me breakfast in the morning we were chilling in the back garden all night it was a gorgeous sunny warm evening we were overlooking the countryside from the back garden it was lovely amazing and then just i kind of meet you know like meeting people along the way um getting to black sail hut that was cool because i was the first one there unless someone got there ridiculously early and left but <laughs> about 15 20 minutes after i got there everyone all the hikers turned up uh, but i was there for ages and the last to leave so i mean that's just kind of the same all the time isn't it for me <laughs> not necessarily being the first one there but the last to leave so because i was there for about honestly an hour and 45 minutes in the black sail hut i was just chilling i was like you know what i'm looking forward to this place need a break before the ascent need a coffee some snacks to plan my route and that's where i met pete who's raise, raising money for Macmillan and The Not Forgotten. Oh, and Grassmere, I can't talk about the best, the, the best part of anything without talking about Grassmere. My favorite place on earth. And um, that was amazing. So I got into Grassmere in the evening after one of the toughest days at Lining Crag and Calf Crag, Gibson Knot, Helm Crag. 
that was tough. That was the most, that was the most physically challenging day. Definitely. It wasn't my worst day though, even when the morning started out with that weirdo at Borrowdale, but um <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh my god oh by the way i don't know if i mentioned he got kicked off because when i met up with pete briefly i was i asked and he said yeah uh the guy someone had uh, reported him to the guy and the the owner the guy who came um came out and kicked him off the site and i was like yes justice man honestly if you don't know what i'm on about it's in one of the videos that i've done because i know i'm going to be doing day by day videos and then a full video anyway uh, yeah, so that was in Mario, but that was that morning, but as soon as I got into Grasmere, everything just lifted. I uh, called my grandpa, spoke to him, and uh, went, got into the uh, country house that I put myself in, and had the most amazing goat's cheese salad of my life. Whatever they did to them walnuts. Oh my god, they were like glazing something and roasted and I have roasted walnuts all the time because it's my favourite like snack. So that dish was made for me and goat's cheese is my favourite cheese. <laughs> and it's a salad and I love salad so. And that goat's cheese, they kind of like glaze that in something and it was so good. It was so good. And I had um, spicy chips as well, which were nice. And some wine. So yeah, staying in that hotel was lovely as well. Not a hotel, country house, technically. It was gorgeous. Very cute. So that was definitely a really awesome night. A tough day. A really tough day, but just an awesome night, honestly. Oh, getting into Keld. Right, okay, so that was really, really lovely. So, the I started off that day. My mum had dropped me off. Oh yeah, that was the other time <laughs> had a cry that I was on about it was uh, my mum dropped me off and I was fine and then maybe about half an hour later Cameron was saying to me he was like look there's no shame in just you know he said no one's gonna Cameron said Cameron said if you need to come home then you can like you know you've done you've done enough and you know, and everyone's really proud and I'm just like Oh my god, I can't not cry, this is so hard. Every time I talk about it, every time I talk about going home because I really want to. I really want to, but I shouldn't because even though, because even though it's what I really want to do, I know that I just won't be, I'll be really disappointed with myself if I do that. So, you know, I've got a week left, halfway at the end of today been out for a week exactly today so so I'm gonna carry on and hopefully it will get well even if it doesn't get easier at least as long as it doesn't get any harder because this is just about manageable <laughs> just couldn't couldn't keep the emotions together and just had to because I was like it just hit me that you know I was on my own again and I'm fine being on my own but I think after you're on your own for such a long time and it's like I'm not I'm not anti-social but I'm not like insanely social if you know what I mean like I need company every now and then but I can be on my own and I'm happy being on my own at times so that's good like that's the thing if you're gonna solo hike you need to be able to enjoy your own company that's really important that's a good tip and i can enjoy my own company but like i said rambling again sorry um yeah so that whole day through the dales i was like oh come on but it was fine you know my spirit after the cry my spirits were up and i was happy i was content i was enjoying the walk and i was like the Oxford dales are just a drag to walk through and they were but again so got into and that's when um, i got into the start of swaledale area that was beautiful that was just spectacular exactly what i needed after the dales just had to road walk on that busy road for about 15 minutes that wasn't fun anyway i was talking about the cow lodge so get into the Cal Lodge and not knowing where to stop because I was like I'm just gonna wing it every night which you know worked for some most nights really but it worked for all of them didn't it because I was fine 
and I uh, always got a place to stay so I was gonna camp but got a pint in the cow lodge even though it said residents only but I saw the Australian couple and they were like oh you can sit with us so I was like okay so I did uh, blended in and um, they, they, they said if I've not sort of camping like just see how much a room is so I did with breakfast 55 quid I think it was 50 55 something like that and I was like oh my god yeah so yeah I did and then that was an awesome night so uh chilled out of my room a bit got like ready cleaned up and then um had had food and I had food with that Australian couple as well so that was really nice I had uh I think I had a what did I have a goat another goat's cheese salad or something I don't remember and a sticky toffee sponge with custard <laughs> that was uh lovely and uh then you know went up to the room and everything then came back down and me the Australian couple and an American couple played this dice game called Far Call so that that was a lot of fun had really good conversation with them and there was another British couple there as well who we had a conversation with I'm so sorry I didn't get any of these couples names but I am gonna do like a, a special thanks to everyone at the end so you know I'll put whose names I remember and if I didn't get your name I'll put where I know you from <laughs> so you'll know it's you if you ever find this I, and I do apologize to everyone's name who I either didn't get or can't remember I met a lot of people um which and they've all been amazing so yeah and then honestly that whole stretch from like the Keld Lodge, you know, because in the morning I had a really lovely breakfast. I think I had like eggs on toast with mushroom and tomato and orange juice and coffee. It was gorgeous. And that place was just gorgeous as well. So I've got an absolute bargain there. The whole stretch from Keld to Grinton was just spectacular, you know, Swaledale. I'm so glad I didn't do the high route. I'm so glad because that low route just in the valley and uh, going to like stopping off in uh, Gunnerside which is such a gorgeous bright green and colourful village um, yeah that whole day massive high point loved it so yeah and honestly like you know Grinton Lodge um, was nice as well that YHA really lovely YHA I camped there so yeah had a really had a lot of really amazing times to be honest and i'm just looking back on them all now and <laughs> speaking of like you know the best times on the trail it's not happened yet but i imagine that reaching robin hood's bay in the sea and obviously seeing cameron for the first time in two weeks will be just oh. I'm just so excited for it. That's going to be such a high point. I know it's going to be in the drive back and everything. So really looking forward to that very soon. The path is actually across there. So I'm kind of walking adjacent to it. Just over there somewhere, but it joins it just down here. Get me nots did you know that you know when you look at them there some have the yellow centers and some have the white centers the white ones are the ones that have already been pollinated and the nectar's been taken out so the yellow signifies that there's nectar in there for the bees pretty cool our nature's just you know like that forget me nots are just very bee considerate aren't they yeah, you can see some white centres and some yellow. <laughs>
on I went, hiking the last few miles for coast to coast. At this point, Cameron was nearby, so we arranged a meeting place just outside of Robin Hood's Bay. Hello! Together we walked the last mile to the coast, but not before stopping for some chips, as I was starving. And of course I made it all the way to the end of the coast to coast from the Irish Sea to the North Sea with my little passenger pebble that I transported along with myself across the country. I was so proud for completing this emotionally and physically challenging feat and I know it's tradition for some to head to the Bay Hotel for a pint but it was much too loud and busy at the time and I didn't want to overstimulate myself so I opted for the much more relaxed vibe in the smuggler's wine bar to sit with a glass of wine and reflect on the journey over the past two weeks and of course Thank you guys so much for following me along on this adventure. Coffee in a paper cup Hot the engine starts right up Clip myself into the middle seat Daddy liked talk radio Told me, let's go see what we could see. We pulled into the empty lot before the pavement got too hot. Underneath her leafy crown, the only shade for miles and miles around.